Hey, this is Reed. I had intended to do one of these a long time ago, but uh, I didn't. Actually, I kind of broke my camera. But uh, yeah, hi. Finally, I'm doing one. It's the night before the election in the United States. I'm terrified. Uh, you, you probably are too. And I actually can't help you with that. Uh, first of all, let me show you where I am. I am on a swing which is pretty cool and it's outside it's dark those are cool hanging lights I'm in my sister's backyard there's a nice wall there and part of a little pirate house for my nephews outside of this wall a bunch of Trump supporters uh, lots of them in fact this entire neighborhood and to look at the campaign signs pretty much everybody within about a mile maybe five I don't know I actually haven't seen a single Clinton supporting sign anywhere now that's kinda of scary but I'm actually not as scared about that as I am about everything else uh, where do I begin well I'm gonna smoke a cigarette I'm supposed to quit I haven't quit yet also I have a beer pumpkin I think my brother brewed it I hope you can hear me well Anyway, might be a little tipsy too. What was I saying? Oh, I'm scared. Well, so are you, probably. Um, I'm an anarchist. You know that, probably. You've read me. I talk a lot about anarchy and how I don't like government and how I feel like the government is always sort of using us regardless of what we're doing, uh, particularly in this election. Right now, there are two candidates. There's Hillary Clinton. Um, and there's Donald Trump. Both of them are bad people. Well, no, actually, they're probably good people. They're really kind to their family. They really care about people. They care about the people that they care about. And they don't care about the people that they don't care about. Which is kind of like about everybody else, I guess. Um, but when you think about it, that's how shit happens. So, I care about my family. I care about my friends. I think my friends are fucking awesome. You probably think your friends are too. Uh, I also care about people I've never met, which is weird. Um, I care about a bunch of people in the Middle East. Never met them. I just don't want to see them die. I care about a bunch of people in Europe. I don't want to see them go to shit the way that we're kind of going right now. Uh, what that means, though, is... I have a sense of solidarity with people I've never met. Most people kind of have that to some degree, but we tend to get really familial, tribal, kindred. I like the people I like. I don't trust the people I don't like. Supposedly that's because of evolution or, or well, that's usually what they say. If you ask the Christians, you know, they'd have a different answer. Everybody's got an answer to why we hate people we don't know. I like this beer. And I probably like you too. Um, I'm not going to spill my beer there. Anyway. The idea of solidarity with people you've never met is actually very difficult to comprehend. Um, why would I care about an Arab? Why would I care about a Muslim? Especially a Muslim who might want to see me dead because I'm a fag. Um, well, I don't want to see anyone die. I don't want to see anyone die unnecessarily. Or even necessarily. I don't like watching death. I hate horror movies. Absolutely. Unless they're the cool, like, Guillermo del Toro ones where there's a little girl who saves everything and then there's a big fawn that, like, yeah, you know. Oh, and then they fight fascists. That one's pretty cool. Penn's Labyrinth, in case you haven't watched that. Uh, but solidarity with people I've never met um, is the opposite of that familial idea. Um, that idea that we only protect our own. Uh, that people who have given us loyalty specifically are not necessarily always the people who are worth saving. That's weird. That sounds like, wait, you hate your family? No, I fucking love my family. My sisters are awesome. My nephews are really cool. This is, I'm on the swing, see? I can't really swing though. I'm a little too big for it. But there's nationalism. That's what I was really trying to talk about. Nationalism, of course, is the idea that your nation is pretty cool and you're a part of it. That second part is more important than the first one. 
Um, I'm part of America? Well, supposedly. I was born here. Um, and that's supposed to mean something. I'm supposed to like being an American. I'm supposed to be a patriot. I'm supposed to enjoy all of our democracy and freedom and 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 fake coffee creamers that we have in our grocery stores, sometimes entire rows of them. I mean, that's America, right? Uh, actually, that's nationalism. Um, America doesn't exist, except in the minds of everybody. I mean, sure, there are borders. There's like a piece of paper, or I think it's lambskin, that founds America. A lot like there were supposedly little documents inside of every feudal manner that proved that the peasants were supposed to obey the masters. Nothing really changes. I mean, the Bible, eh, that's proof that you're supposed to obey God and the priests and all of that. That's, just, that's all shit, you know. Um, somebody wrote something and told us that that means something, and because it was collectively agreed 200, 300, 1,000 years ago, that's the way things are supposed to be. That document, the uh, Constitution, that's right, it's called that. Constitution, by the way, I mean, a constitutional is when you go for a walk. Um, go have a constitutional, if you're British. Um, or you like to be drunk and say British stuff. I'm going to light my cigarette. I should really quit. But honestly, this shit's stressing me out. Anyway, where were we? Um, mm, nationalism. America doesn't exist except in your head. Uh, and then there's some cops and some military and some tax collectors like the IRS and a bunch of congressmen and senators and, and maybe even a female president who all are very certain that America does exist. As long as America exists, they get power. Um, if America doesn't exist... We lose a reason to listen to them. The only reason that we'd actually listen to them, if America didn't exist, is if they put a gun to our heads, or they were physically giving us things like, hey, here's some money, here's some beer, here's some cigarettes, here's a place set, uh, here's some rights, here's some protections, here's some food. You know, like warlord stuff. The stuff that you see in the Middle East and in Africa. You see that in the Middle East and in Africa, by the way, very often because of America. Uh, we caused that. We caused a lot of it. Not all of it. And we definitely like to pretend we're really into a democracy, but then we'll overthrow a government that is democratically elected because we don't like that. We did that in Palestine. We probably helped in Egypt. <clears throat> we really like to move Barak, by the way. And we do that like crazy in South America. That's Republicans, that's Democrats. Democrats are actually really good at South America. They are incredibly good at fucking up South America. Not so good at the Middle East. That's what we need Republicans for. But in both cases, they're always meddling with other things in the name of the nation, which, by the way, America, that's us, supposedly, if you're American. They're doing it on our behalf, um, usually to get oil, because if there's oil or uranium, especially in South America, then America will do really well. And if America does really well, they get more power, and we get nice stuff that the rest of the world doesn't get. Like entire rows of coffee creamer that are all fake. You know the first ingredient on those is corn syrup solids? It's pretty weird. By the way, it's also the same ingredient in a lot of baby formula. Yeah. Nestle rocks. Anyway, so we're talking about nationalism. The nation exists in our head. And we do little rituals to make it happen. In fact, today... Well, yeah, it's today now. We're going to vote. Well, most of you are going to vote. Some of you are not going to vote. I'm not going to vote. Some people are angry about that. Sorry, guys. And girls. And people. And awesome people. And people who don't like me. I don't know. Sorry. Um, but actually not sorry. Because I don't believe in America. In the same way, I don't believe in the Christian God either. I don't believe in capitalism. Don't really believe in Santa Claus. I do believe in some stuff that most people don't, like gods who keep showing up a whole lot the last few days, kind of trying to warn me about stuff. And I don't know what to do about that, except just kind of light more candles. Um, yeah. So, but America exists because we make it exist. We manifest it like magic. Actually, it's an idea. And then we make it happen. 
And as long as we believe America exists, America exists. And we keep making America exist. And when we collectively, like 300 million of us, all say, oh yeah, I'm an American, then we've made America exist. That, by the way, is the exact same way that the Catholic Church worked. That's how Christianity works. That's how every single massive, large religion has ever gained power over people, regardless of its monotheist or polytheist. Hell, Rome was awful. They gain power because we agree to give them power. And a lot of that is we allow, we give them our power, our magic power, our imagination, our manifestation. So tomorrow, big ritual of nationalism. When everybody goes and votes, probably for Clinton if you're watching this, and maybe for Trump, I don't know. Um, he's ugly and scary. Um, I don't like Clinton either, sorry. Um, but you're all going to vote, which is all going to give the American idea, egregore, by the way they call that, um, it's going to give the American idea, egregore, life. You are manifesting America. <sighs> kind of depressing, huh? I know a lot of people probably believe in America. I mean, it's the freest place on earth, right? I mean, unless you're First Nations or black or trans or queer or in prison by the way which most of them are black because america's really racist but if you're in prison right now you are not free yeah maybe some of them deserved it i guess if you call stealing something because you're hungry deserving a lack of freedom but that's okay no that's not okay i'm saying all of this because i think most people don't understand what i mean when i say i'm an anarchist that's part of it. I have a solidarity with people who I've never seen. Mostly because I don't believe in the fictions that we create together. I don't believe in America. Therefore, I don't really think there's a huge difference between an American and an Arab in Egypt or Syria or Lebanon or one of those 11 countries that we're bombing right now. I don't think there's a difference between us. We're human. Sure, we've lived different lives, and even though I'm a poor punk, I have a lot more access to wealth than they do. Which is probably what we mean when we're talking about protecting our freedom. Anyway, good luck. Hang on tight. Bye.